Hey guys, this week on the Oscar cast, it's all about the boobies and the wink. Yes, it's a tech angle to this. Awesome cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. Hey guys, it's time to sync up that Chromecast. It's time to watch this on the big screen. I know who you are. Hi, Doug. Uh, it's the awesome cast number 183 live here from Pittsburgh, PA. I am Michael Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. We're getting ready to talk geek, talk tech, talk social media, everything uh, going right and going wrong in the in the world of technology. Uh, having some fun here uh, with us, uh, remotely keeping away from the cold, cold temperatures. He knows we don't have any heat down here in the studio. It's John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. How you doing, sir? I'm pretty good. I'm I'm nice and warm. <laughs> Better than I am right now, for sure. Actually, the 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 office I have is the only room in the house that's surrounded on all sides. Well, on three sides by by interior walls so it's probably about 15 degrees warmer in this room than any other room mm -hmm. which actually makes it un almost unbearably hot you know, you know i have uh maybe not similar but i have uh th my office is always the warmest room in the house because of the computers and the drobos um, yeah, it's it just well. consistently like I go in, it's like a warm blanket, so I'm okay with it. Uh, one that's actually with us and trying to keep warm is uh, the person that apparently podcasting in Pittsburgh is fighting over this <laughs> evening. Uh, Katie, do this. At K Dutters on the Twitters, how you doing? Good. How are you? I guess we should give a shout out to uh, the great Scarehouse podcast yes. that was trying to steal you tonight, but yes. we already had you book for two shows. <laughs> yeah, <so>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're gonna have a good. Um, they're talking to one of the artists um, from Creepos, 3D Christmas. Mm. They're talking to one of the artists, the new artists they used this year, who had some nice 3D artwork for us. Awesome. So it's really going to be a great show. Awesome. So I'm, I'm kind of jealous I'm here. <laughs> I'm stuck with Chilla. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I think we just book her through the end of year and call it a day. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Um, I'll connect you with my agent. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you want to join us here live, like these guys are, like everybody in the chat room, you could go to live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, we're here uh, every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But of course, we're going all Tuesday night with all the podcasts, all the geekery going on. Uh, you can join us on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're also on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. Uh, you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, we're also available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and of course Spreaker now as well. Uh, audio and video forms, however you like to, to catch us. Video is not required. We try to be mindful of that, but we also uh, have some great. We, we try to clip out some of the good visual stuff, at least too. So if you do say, "Hey, I do want to see how it is," like when we we're demonstrating Google Glass two last week and everything, uh, you can hop on uh, the YouTube and you know hopefully just find a clip and 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 check it out. You know, just trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys. Uh, hey, before we get into stuff, I want to. Uh, uh, send a big thank you to uh, Mike Pound, Uncle Crappy, last week, uh, of course. Uh, we talked a lot about Google Glass 2. We talked about the Wink feature. Uh, I may rant about it a little bit later on <laughs> in this show uh, because I, I, after a week with it. Um, but uh, he, he did talk about our discussion last week, and he did link the show uh, in his article over at timesonline.com. Uh, so uh, if you are a subscriber to the Beaver Valley Times, uh, you can uh, go – or sorry, Beaver County Times? County, Yes. Not Valley. Um, I'm thinking about the mall. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, uh, timesonline.com, if you want to go uh, check that out, you can check out at least the first bit of the article. He talked about a couple different things. There was a, another tech story. I can't remember which one it was, but but uh, yeah, we were, we were in there and got it linked up. Uh, so thanks uh, for uh, spreading what we're doing here in Awesome Cast there, Mike Pound. Uh, go, go follow him at Uncle Crappy and also uh, BCT uh, Mike Pound uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Uh, Chilla, what do you got? So I got, I got two things. So, um, <clears throat> first up is a new iPhone case. I, I think I put a link there in the show notes. Uh, it actually has a really nice form factor and actually kind of has a very executive look to it. And if my internet wasn't a piece of crap right now, um, it would be probably rendering on my screen. Well, there it is. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it looks a lot like the Samsung Note um, covers. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they actually properly cut out the front panel for the time and date 
Oh, and they've cool. actually made the front of the cover uh, touch sensitive to where you can actually swipe to answer the phone mm -hmm. without having to open up the front cover. That's um, cool. Obviously, you're not going to get the battery life that you get out of the, the cases that are designed for the Galaxy line or the, I think the, the Moto X kind of does the same thing where it only lights up a certain area of the screen. Your screen's still going to light up behind the panel. But um, I just think this case, re I, I go caseless because I like the look and feel of my device. Mm -hmm. um, to me, this compl highly complements the device itself and, and makes it look nice. The only thing I wish they would have done is somehow worked in for me to be able to put a few cards in there. I'm, I'm looking to move away from my wallet. Mm -hmm. And you see, you see cases that are kind of like the, or is it the book book, and 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 cases like that where you can slide two credit cards and your ID card and twenty bucks in there. I, I'd like to get to that point, but with the look of this, so until for right now, I, I would think about purchasing this, um, but it, it I, I still want that kind of wallet replacement as well. So it looks like it's over at, uh, it looks like it's by Moshi. Uh, it's the Sense Cover Steel Black. If you want to check that out. Uh, and how much is it going for? I think it's uh, 45 bucks. Okay. Which is a little on the high side. Yeah. But I think for, for, for what you get out of it, um, it does have a magnetic clasp to keep it, keep it covered. You don't have to worry about necessarily buying another plastic if you think about when you buy a normal case and then you buy a plastic overlay for your front screen, I look at this as that's combined. So you're probably getting about the same price point mm -hmm. as, a, as a decent case. Um, I, I think cases are going to be something that's that, that continue to sell as an accessory. I'm not a huge fan of the ones that are developed by Apple, um, like the Connect 4 case for the 5C. Mm -hmm. but or the connect four looking case um but i think this is a, a decent first try at an alternative or a nicer looking case whereas i think like things like the there's one coming out from mofi which is a juice pack and i think we talked about it two weeks ago yeah and also gives you some spare spare space on the device i'd like to see someone come out kind of with an all-in-one let's make something that looks really nice is very functional and kind of replaces other items you would normally be carrying with you. So, awesome. Awesome. but more importantly, after listening, I, unfortunately, I wasn't wasn't with the crew last week. Um, I had to do a team building exercise for work where I got to play video games, so that was pretty cool. But I heard about um, Mike talking about wanting to trademark the word boobs. There is actually a new high tech bra out, and I included a link for this too, and it. it there, there's a whole video around it, but it actually measures uh, a woman's heart rate and calculates um, a love value and will actually unclasp the bra <laughs> if her heart rate gets high. Oh, and of course it's Japanese. Of course. Of course. It's, oh, and there's, the, there's a there digital class. With a, <laughs> wait, wait, I love how it glows in the front of it here. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> and, and the guy attempting i'm sorry if you guys can't see the video we'll tweet this out oh mike if you could tweet, tweet this out here on twitter human sexuality specialist <laughs> we all know what we want to be when we grow up now so you know, like okay so these are it's 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 a clasp right and it glows purple for you guys on audio and, and apparently what so 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 it's checking your heart rate and everything and it would just like automatically unhook that, that's what it looks like. And it connects to an iPhone app. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, and there's a great demonstration there. I think we're just <laughs> becoming an NSFW show thanks to that. Um, wow, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> I love the tech demos they're working on here. Like, we thought long and hard and <laughs> about the best I'd, way to get a bra off. <laughs> like, I'd love to see Johnny Ive giving a demonstration and talking about this. We've completely rethunk the bra. <laughs> it's elegant. It's curved. Like, like I could just completely see him going through this. It would be really good in a British accent as well. 
But I, I don't know. I, I think it's an interesting concept. I mean, are they going to make men's pants too? I, I don't know. <laughs> they just drop automatically. <laughs> uh, Dunners, what do you think of the the, the eyebrow concept I, here? I want to know how long it's going to take until they make a reality show based on this. Where you just go and you wear this bra and you go out with a bunch of different guys and see how your bra reacts and that's how you pick your suitors. <laughs> instead of instead of the rose. Yes, instead of the rose, you just like <laughs> pop out. <and laughs> that's how you know how you're supposed to be. Instead of the bachelor to be like the blue boobs. Wow. Uh, what's this? What's it called? Like I, I they're just kind of generically. It, it's uh. The video is a tad NSFW. Thanks for the warning at the bottom there. Uh, it's called it's the True called, Love Tester. It's called the True Love. I think it's called the True Love Bra, isn't it? It's, it looks like it's the True Love Tester uh, okay. from this article. But it, whatever that Japanese translation is going to be. Uh, so we're wasting it. our time dating is what you're telling me. I should just be wearing this bra and walking around and talking to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the how's the weather? Oh, hey. What are you oh. doing later? <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> For, uh, and, and why wouldn't they have just made the device that, like, the it, it's some kind of strap that goes around almost like a heart monitor, and then it just rings your phone or something? Did they really have to make it where it unclasped your bra? Gets to the point. Before I guess so. Here's some uh, history here. Um, before GPS was a thing and, and handheld devices were a thing, um, in Japan they had these little... I almost want to equate them with like Tamagotchi sized little handheld things that you would carry around and you would put it in a specific mode and it would either be uh, chat, uh, hook up or be friends. And when you came in proximity to somebody else who had the same th little thing in their hand or uh, they would, uh, it would go off. So you would find somebody nearby who was kind of in the same, I guess, mood as you. And then if, if you didn't like them, you would hide the little thing up your sleeve so they couldn't figure out that you had the other half. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of, they've, they've done a, they've come a long way in the, the dating process courtship is this the, 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 <laughs> is the technological courtship process yes. apparently is that what i want <laughs> wow well, it was interesting because they had to take into account like different heart rates and, and if you look at the chart that's on the on, on the website like they had to figure <laughs> out okay average heart rate when jogging so so it's not going to unclasp if you're jogging but if you get a surprise gift your what? your bra's probably gonna pop open. Yeah, there's this pink zone apparently uh, for flirting and surprise gift. <laughs> so I'm either in love or getting a gift. This is fantastic. <laughs> so don't wear this at Christmas time, ladies. Uh, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, okay, let's 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 get something a little safer. Hopefully, um, I. I, I so I'm I'm always looking for uh, new glass apps, you know, incorporating like what I'm doing, you know, on my phone and everything. Um, and uh, like many, and I know some people have gone, you know, other other ways with this. Uh, but I I hopped on Feedly last summer when uh, Google Reader was shutting down, for instance. Uh, and there's a couple of things, like a couple RSS kind of pushers that'll like I get some stuff from The Verge and everything thanks to uh, an app called Wink Feed, which I think is actually a an actual glassware app if you go to the site and it's one you can turn on. Um, but there's also like other uh, apps that, that loaded through different methods, um, and one of the sites that I look at uh, periodically is uh, glass-apps.org. So this is the stuff that isn't necessarily like some of them are, uh, but some a lot of them aren't uh, approved yet through the Glassware app. Maybe they're beta or they're something else entirely. Um, or maybe they're not using the, the the entire SDK or something like that. Um, but in this case, uh, this is an unofficial one, but somebody made a Feedly app for Glass. Um, and it mostly works. I mean, it, it does the bare minimum of what I would want to do. Since, again, I'm looking at all my stuff in Feedly. And, of course, this is just a screencast for you guys on video uh, from Glass on the, on the iPhone. Thank you, the new app for iPhone. Um, so uh, what it'll do is it'll just load up the, kind of the 10 latest things. Whoops, wrong one. And, and it doesn't load as an app. I can't say, okay, glass. And you see, it's not really in this list like anything else. That's usually the glassware apps kind of pop up in there. Um, instead, I cancel out of that. You pin it to the left here where you have your Google cards and there's my events and everything. Uh, so if you pop into Feedly, it'll actually, oops, it's catching up there. There you go. And it'll start loading, uh, here's, uh, something from one of the ICP sites I still kind of follow. There's something from 148 apps. There's uh, another one from my uh, 148 apps. Um, as I wait again for it to uh, uh, 
update here on the screen. Um, you know, between the ropes, some wrestling stuff. Um, and then I can refresh it. because so apparently I did this about four hours ago. And it'll give me some new stuff. So it's pretty cool. I, I mean, it doesn't uh, format anything. Uh, one thing I don't like, uh, I think Wink Feed was one. I think they've updated it since. A couple of these will send me headlines and articles, but I can't actually read them. It's just like, here's a picture, here's an article, that's it. At least with these, it does give me the option to pull them up, and then I can I can pull up the websites uh, and read through them. And you get the mobile version of the websites when you go through um, Google Glass, if they're available. Most bigger sites like, you know, you know, Save the Verge, or most of the news sites I follow are going to have it. So it's an all right experience as far as trying to uh, uh, deal with that. So it's kind of nice, a uh, uh, nice no other way to say, okay, hey, what news is coming up? Instead of looking in my timeline and having to go back and say, okay, what were the last few time, last few uh, headlines that have popped up? Um, so and again, it, it integrates with my Feedly, so it's everything you know that isn't already in Wink Feed or something like that, uh, and kind of you know broader what I follow. Uh, so it's it's kind of nice um, and, and just. Uh, you know, another one more step towards this thing being kind of more useful and integrated in my life as far as that goes. So, Chilla, what do you got? I just gave you mine. No, I, I went the wrong way. Daughters, what did you get? <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to talk. <laughs> yes, wrong way. That's all right. Uh, the first thing I had for you was the NFL's blocking streaming video of the Super Bowl in the stadium. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, um, NFL.com and Fox are both streaming the video both streaming the Super Bowl again this year, but you are unable to stream it while you're in the stadium. No instant replays on your handheld devices. Mm -hmm. uh, it's essentially with it for the band bandwidth issues. Uh, they're concerned because last year they lost. People weren't able to upload photos, even text, because there were so many people trying to do so many things at one time, obviously. Well, this happens. Uh, I know this happens here locally. Anytime I'm at console for, mm -hmm. even if it's a Pittsburgh Power game, and of course Royal Rumble, it was, mm -hmm. it was abysmal too. You, you can't post your Instagram, your Facebook really easy, even text messages. Mm -hmm. Have slowed down, um, and I can't even imagine that many people in, in a stadium like mm -hmm. that. Um, I well, this is a bit life. We were there for WrestleMania. It was impossible to try to get something. They're just so saturated. You can put eighty thousand people in one place, and they're all trying to text message. It's not going to work. <laughs> no. You know, is it, but, but that's just via their Wi-Fi, right? You can stream it there, via your carrier. There's questions about that getting overloaded too. So that they're, okay. I think, I believe in the article it even said something about the carriers even being restricting, restrictive. Which they can probably do like like tower based. So they can mm -hmm. just say these are the mm -hmm. towers that are going to reach this point. We're going to block this X, Y, and Z on here. I, I think it makes sense because um, again, just like eighty thousand people all pointing out their phone trying to you know stream a video is going to be a problem. You know, even half, even a quarter, even a tenth of that. Um, and, and they definitely want people there mm -hmm. on Facebook, on Twitter, reacting pictures, etc. Hopefully not video, you know, because mm -hmm. I think they still have a problem with that, of course. Um, well, you figure I've got my tablet, I've got my phone, I'm ten, trying to do 10 different uploads because as we saw at Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. um, people still bring their tablets places too. People, people love taking their pictures at WWE <laughs> events with their iPad. Yes, <laughs> it's magic. Like, I don't know, how many, a couple of times there were people in front of us, we were, we were, we were pretty good, we were just a few rows up the side there, um, and they were just like, well, you just see somebody stand up <laughs> with their iPad, you know, it was the tablet, you know, and you see exactly what they're seeing. They're not looking at the thing. Because I'm just waiting for somebody to do that on the sideline and get like you know decked. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that that happened to a guy at a, what a baseball game. Yeah, I think it, there was a video going around, wasn't there? Yeah, he he was he was he was video, taking video of the baseball game with his iPad, and the ball like came and crushed the one side of the iPad. Like it was all dented in. The screen I think actually survived and they're saying it completely protected him from from a near death experience. Mm -hmm. Of course. But I mean, pay attention to, to what you're doing and quit and drop your tablet. You don't you don't need to video with a tablet. It's a, I think it's overkill. And usually they're not really, like, that's not the thing. Like, I would never take pictures or video with this thing. I do if it's just the thing on me, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, maybe for Instagram or something. But, like, it, it, this is not the thing where, oh, I want to go record this thing that's happening with this. Because it's just not a good camera. I guess they're probably a little better on the iPads by now. Um, but they're still not nearly as good as, the, as this thing is going to be, you know, mm -hmm. with, the, with the 5S. So, 
I don't know. It's it, it just seems goofy. It's like, hey, you look weird doing it. But for some people, that might be all they have. You know, mm -hmm. some people aren't able to get cell phones and plans that have good pictures. So, they're, well, I did Spring, and this is my computer, is my iPad, which is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, just like kids getting iPod touches because they can't get an iPhone. My nephew is one of those. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's the thing they have to carry around. You know, even with a mini, it looks kind of weird, but, yeah, you know. Teach his own. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we did get an email Ooh. this week. Ooh. We got uh, Alex Carr's always, he's always in the chat room, and he gives us uh, uh, his awesome thing a lot of times as well. Um, and, and, and usually it's wrestling related, but this, is, this has a tech angle to it too. And I was really I was getting an update on what's going on with this. Um, so here's what he had to say: Hi guys, Alex Carr is here uh, from California uh, with another crazy wrestling related awesome thing of the week. I mentioned before the crazy uh, ARG stuff going on on Chikara. Uh, well, it seems it's coming to a head this Saturday at National Pro Wrestling Day. I'm not going to do the gimmick on here that we do on the other show. Um, you can check it out at nationalprowrestlingday.com. Uh, he says, uh, I wanted to bring your attention to the website because it's changed a few times since last year. I love the current layout also because, uh, and I'll bring it up here in a second, um, also because they want to bring your attention uh, the work they're doing for charity, uh, they've not only made the show free to attend in Easton, PA, but you can catch a free stream on their YouTube channel. So they're actually using, it looks like, YouTube live events from what I've seen on the site, uh, as well as on YouTube, as well as on the site itself. Uh, they also have a link to donate to a charity they've partnered up with this year. Um, so, yeah... I, Again, this the last year they did have like a, a eye pay per view kind of method for this thing. It was a really nice kind of mashup of a bunch of independent wrestling. Um, but this year, uh, yeah, they're they're doing they're just making it completely free of charge. They're have, doing it for charity. Um, they're not doing the two shows in one day like they did before. They're already twenty three percent complete of making their five thousand dollar goal. Uh, for the Against Malaria Foundation. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I think back to what we do here locally with Chachi Plays, you know, you know, doing something, you know, cool with something that maybe not ha doesn't have as good a connotation, you know, with video games. And, of course, now we have Extra Life and everything like that. Uh, but it, it's really cool that, that this is a, a nice show to demonstrate, like, what's going on in independent pro wrestling and, and do some good. You know, and it is th at this point three days away, uh, so you can check it out at nationalprowrestlingday.com uh, for more information. And I watch that live stream on Saturday as well. That's going to be good, and I imagine it's going to be on afterwards as well uh, on their YouTube channel if they're using the live events. So, uh, also worth noting is the fact that there are more Ashes videos that are popping up uh, this week. There are two premiered early at shop.wrestlingis.com, aka the Chikara Network. Uh, and it seems that we're getting closer to the payoff of the big storyline. Uh, so this is one of those where a, a promotion had gone away and they're doing a really fun thing where um, these mysterious videos about what's going on, you know, it's kind of the ashes of this promotion. It's like if WWE went away and Daniel Bryan and John Cena did like all these videos be like, man, I wish WWE would come back, you know, and went on with that. Uh, so you can go check, out, check that out as well at shop wrestlingis.com really good um I, I think some kind of viral marketing they're doing um which is really important for these like you know smaller independent you know groups that don't have that much money and and they, and they really get a lot of buzz i know the guys on the on the wrestling mayhem show have been uh talking it up and on the board and everything uh for months so uh go check that out thanks alex cars um and with that we have a couple more stories i love that I think I'm the only one that didn't post a Google Glass story. Am I right? <laughs> is it? Is this right? <laughs> um, I don't know. Which one do you want, guys? Or, or actually, well, on on your point of, on your point of uh, uh, wrestling, mm -hmm. I, I put something in here. Okay. Um, Apple TV got another channel today, and they're they're saying that they're going to make an announcement where what's the the streaming service that they're going to put out. The, the WWE Network? Yeah. They're they're going to get their own Apple TV Oh, nice. Channel. Yeah, because really they're, um, I mean, they've already said they're going to be everywhere. They didn't even announce the Chromecast as being an option. They've announced, like, mm -hmm. the, the Xbox 360, uh, Xbox One coming in a few months, uh, both PlayStations, um, um, Roku's, Android and iOS tablets. Um, but no, they didn't, they did announce Apple TV. They did announce Chrome TV, Chromecast, but they did give out Chromecast at the event, apparently at CES. Um, 
And, and I saw a picture online of an of an Apple TV box actually wrapped with their logo. Oh, really? Yeah. So it'll it'll be interesting. I don't know if it was gonna if it's gonna be a giveaway or what. But then the other interesting thing on the Apple TV front is all of a sudden the Apple Store today completely broke off Apple TV in its own store segment. Okay, is that what I'm looking at here? Uh, so so and it, <clears throat> so previously you have like what Macintosh, iPad, iPhone, iPod. And now Apple TV was always just kind of like an extra thing? Like It was an accessory, yeah. Okay. And it was an accessory under every option. So you know how you can AirPlay from a device or, or, or and that kind of thing? Yeah. It, it actually was just listed as an accessory to everything else. Okay. And they're, they're actually now breaking it off into its own segment, which makes people think that is there something – that's going to be coming along. They haven't updated the device, I think, in in two years. But apparently, it's important enough. It's been getting a lot of updates lately with all these new channels. Um, it's important enough they want it by itself. So maybe this is becoming more than just a hobby. You yeah, know, I wonder if it's going to go the way of the Chromecast, where you're, they're going to give access to more developers to be able to develop for it. I'd hope so. They need to. I mean, we've been calling for this for months or years. Really? Yeah, and there, there's, there was a really good article about, that Bloomberg actually wrote. They just recently put their their channel on the Apple TV <clears throat> and how much help they actually got and how they did get a quasi-SDK, mm-hmm. but the SDK is in limited release, much like uh, Google did with Chromecast at first. So I, I, think it's, I think the streaming media is definitely – if people keep adding channels to all of the different devices, we're definitely going to see – me being sad because I just subscribed to cable. <laughs> <laughs> and you just got locked into a contract, too. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be nice what? if, like, Apple TV paid your contract? Then nah, they wouldn't do that. Or nah. T-Mobile, maybe. If T-Mobile gets a gets a gets some kind of streaming, there you go. They'll, they'll probably, they'll probably pay, pay, to pay, pay to break my contract. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, there's also been um, some stories about I mean, there's been a lot about like like Apple TVs. Like, looks like it's a step closer to being a game console, and having a new one with a little bit more power under the hood. Maybe in the summer, uh, you have Amazon saying they're going to do a three hundred dollars streaming back box slash console, uh, video game console. I I don't know. It, 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 these have been rumors forever. Apparently, the Apple TV TV rumors that we got for the longest time. I really don't believe any of this stuff until I actually see anything. And, you, and you're not going to know until it's actually happening. Very very close to it actually happening, right? Yeah. So, all right. Um, so let's let's get through the Google Glass news. There's, yeah. there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. First of all, I can finally get my specs. Yay. Well, actually, no, they didn't put up a thing yet, but they, they put up an announcement for it. Uh, Google Glass. Uh, you got, you put in here the one from TechCrunch. A Google Glass gets prescription options with four titanium frame styles and shades. Oh, look, that, that's classy. Is that what I should go for? The horn wow. rims right there. Um, well, actually, that's. Oh wait, so that's. That's like more than just an attachment. That's mm-hmm. actually like their frames are different. That I didn't catch from the article before. Um, so if you're on audio, like the picture is like these are actually just looks like horn rimmed glasses mm-hmm. and they attach the unit to the side of it. So I'm wondering, cause, you know, with these things, my guess is. So. Because when you oh, I just yanked that out of my ear. So. So if you're looking at Google Glass, if you're on video here, you see there's a screw right there. So this entire unit actually comes off, and you can take this entire bit off of it, right? So it looks like my guess is they're just going to attach these other frames to just replacing this bit of it, right? That's kind of significant there. Then you don't have this kind of, well, I have to have this as part of the style of what I'm wearing for my prescription glasses. Because the promise has been that um, just like the shades that come with it, they're just going to kind of clip in here. And then you'll just have your prescription glasses will be removable. But now it, it seems more like you have your prescription glasses are just, they're specialized, and this attaches to it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't just make it a design where, much like a lot of other accessories for, for electronic devices or whatever, say it's compatible with XYZ. Mm-hmm. I, I think they would just make it where these frames are Google Glass compatible. And you'll you'll take that screw out and screw it right on. Take the arm off the 
the frames that you buy and screw that on. Now this is a lot more. Oh yeah, this is a lot more exciting. They're showing in different styles here. Um, colors. Now they are saying mm -hmm. that the the, the frames are going to be about two hundred twenty five dollars, and I don't believe that includes the actual lenses. You still have to go to a lens crafter, a lens maker to actually get the lenses for it. But you can get the frames from them. I got my earbud hanging out now. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> So embarrassing. Oh my, I got, I got a hanger. Uh, anyways, we'll just ignore that for the moment. Um, I like this because it, it makes it a lot less awkward. Now, I know this isn't the cheapest option, obviously, uh, because there, there have been other ones where they announced a $99 version, which I think includes the lenses and everything because they're, they're making it so the lenses attach and they have to be made in such a way that you can look through and see this, right? Uh, and, and still be attached to this part of it. Like, they're, they're like there's something about the curvature they have to mess with. So there's something do, special with that. Do you, I mean, as as a as a glassware, do you do you see it where where it would be? Do you well for you? Do you think you would be carrying a second set of glasses with you everywhere so you could interchange? Because I think the one thing they were talking about with that guy in the movie theater that got mm -hmm. escort, escorted out by um, Homeland Security. Um, is that his were integrated into his lenses. Yeah. So when he went into the theater, he, it, I mean, if he took his glasses off, he wouldn't have been able to see the movie. Yeah, and, and I really think, like, I fully <clears throat> expect, like, even just, like, put them in my car or something, a spare pair of prescription glasses. And I think for the most part, I mean, we, we all wear glasses. We all have, like, spare pairs at this point. It's mm -hmm. a lot cheaper to get them now, you know, especially with any optical and, and stuff like that. Um, I think I think you have a secondary pair. So what happens when I'm going about my business and my battery dies in this? So I have to take off my glasses so they can charge, you know? I, I have to have that secondary pair, especially, you know, being nearsighted, I need to have that distance. I can't just, like, take it off the charge, you know, and, and not have those for a bit, typically. Well, we can't put a USB port in the side of your neck. And well, we can. Plug right in. We can, and believe me, I, I thought about it. And there are solutions about like running a cord up here. You see, the connector actually kind of juts over and out, so you can kind of move it along the side of your head and back. I actually played with that the first night with New York because I had this little uh, extra Duracell battery, and it was dying at, uh, towards the end of the night. So I'm like, okay, we'll plug it in. And I dropped it down and. and tucked it in my back pocket actually it worked out pretty well mm -hmm. uh for a little bit um so i mean I, I i do think i think as a glasses word to be conscious with that or or you end up in some place where you're like yeah you can't have that you I, I think i think you have that on you it, it, it's just it's just something you're gonna have to work with you know or you or, or you become that guy that's gonna be the next level of glass hole like, but they're my Christian glasses, man. You can't, you can't make me not wear my glasses. It's like, oh yeah, you can. You have a camera, um, but that's a whole other debate, you know, in the long run. But I will. And I, I think, I think wearable tech this year. I mean, as we were talking at the end of last year, I think it's going to be the big thing. I think there's going to have to be a lot of rules that created. People are going to have to figure out for themselves as well as the public's going to have to figure out where, where, and when the wearable technology fits in. Mm. Um, I, I, I've heard, what is it, um, Samsung announced the theirs is going to be, as of right now, the tentative name is the Galaxy Glasses. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so. and, and it's interesting, uh, and it was a good uh, talk I was listening saying, well, they have to because they don't want to miss the boat in case this does become a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And it is funny because Google's, like, a lot of the Google news is what's, you know, the controversy over it. But it's in the news. It's a part of that mind share right now. Um, even to the point where it's apparently on The Simpsons. Yes. You guys see this episode? Mm -hmm. I actually caught it just, just in time today. Um, Google Goggles. <laughs> which, in storyline, were a gift from Mr. Burns for Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, but it gave him a feed to what everybody's looking at. <laughs> Um, did you see the episode? Yes. What did mm -hmm. you think of it? Oh, I, I thought it was funny. I, I, I liked how it was, oh, here I have this nice gift. And, you know, of course, Mr. Burns 
no, Mr. Burns, uh, was actually spying on everyone using the glass, the mm -hmm. Google goggles. And whenever you would look at somebody, it would pop up some information about them, like how many uh, DUIs I think Homer had or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you'd get this information, and that was part of the glass. And then Homer ends up actually spying on Marge because she borrows the glass, and he finds out some things about her. And it, it I, I like how it ended with Mr. Burns and... and it, Homer was wearing the glasses, or Marge was wearing the glasses when her and Homer were in bed, and Mr. Burns happened to be watching TV, and it was just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another reason you need a second pair of glasses. You don't want to be wearing your Google Glass while you were doing things like that. Especially with this wink thing. Yes. <laughs> this <laughs> this is a the problem. Wink. <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, because I... I did, we talked about last week about the wink, the wink, and the mm -hmm. privacy and everything. Um, so I've, I've I've had a week with the wink feature turned on now, and I have an, an untold number of pictures that are accidentally taken. I've taken like thirty of them sitting here during the show. I swear, because um, the mo, because I mean the you know the the thing is you you just kind of like you wink for a second and it takes a picture. It worked that time. I'm getting the timing down, but unfortunately. Um, apparently there's my, my eyes do other things that are like the wink motion. Um, like, like I was sitting, uh, I was telling you guys earlier, I was, I was sitting here before us doing the movie minute earlier, and I'm just like looking up and down, you know, from this awkwardly placed keyboard to the, to the monitor and everything. And I took four pictures <laughs> while in the process of trying to put a note in. Um, uh, I tweeted today one of me just reaching up for a cup in my cover. And, uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a Google plus stream. Um, I think it's kind of an issue. <laughs> Maybe it's a growing phase. Maybe it's me getting used to it. Um, I, I, I mentioned today I didn't think I'd have to think about the cadence of my blinking, but apparently I do now because, I mean, it's just looking at one eye. It's the same thing to it, right? Um, I, but is it also a way for them to get more pictures of your daily life? Because <laughs> they're all getting sucked up to Google Plus by default. So, I, I don't know. It, it, it's It's... It's a really interesting issue, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm waiting for the time where I'm just happen to be looking the wrong way, and somebody notices a picture was taken, and they're like, "What are you taking a picture of me for?" You know, like it, it adds a little bit of like, uh, like I'm definitely not wearing to the bathroom now. You know, <laughs> you know, as it is, I, I don't, I don't even want to wear it to myself going to the bathroom by myself at this point. Because I've taken some accidental pictures, and it's just like, oh, okay, no, we don't want that going to Google, you know, <laughs> like any time. So it, it kind of now separates. That. I, of course, I can turn it off, but I kind of wanted to see what the feature is like, and and it is handy, you know. You're driving, and you close an eye, <laughs> which probably isn't the best in the long run. Uh, but still, you know, you're not taking your hand off the wheel or talking and trying to deal with that whole thing. So I'm picturing this very awkward date where I'm wearing the fancy bra. <laughs> and so the guy's wearing Google Glass, and he's just winking away at me, and all of a sudden, pop. And <laughs> oh, technology. <laughs> and it all falls apart. That's yeah. another Simpsons episode in the yes. long run. Wow. Google Goggles, or Google Glass. Um, let's get some non-Google stuff. What do we got? Chilla, what do we got this non-Google over here? You got the you got the get glue. I, I and I'm going to go on a rant for just one moment. Go for so it. So I was a huge. I, I really really like get glue. In fact, hold on one second here. One of my favorite things about get glue was that I could check into TV shows and then I got stickers. Real and stickers. Stick these real stickers. Got and I those. would I would actually put reminders in my phone because you could only order so many stickers per month and then i would get more stickers and more stickers and more stickers i put them on all kinds of stuff i put them on the back of my ipad i put them everywhere <clears throat> love the service thought it was really cool concept and it actually got me into social check-ins for what i was watching whether it was a movie um they would do special promotions when things were being covered at mm -hmm. like comic-con if you checked into the Walking Dead during the weekend when it wasn't normally on, you would get special Comic-Con stickers. It, it, cool concept. Before movies came out, I'm sure it really helped with promotion because then people would post that they unlocked the sticker on Facebook and Twitter and uh, whatever. Well, recently, since they were purchased, um, they're they're now no longer doing the stickers. You still earn them, but you don't actually get. You can't get no physical, physical stickers. stickers. They took away the physical stickers. 
And I would actually be willing to pay a small amount to get my stickers. Mm -hmm. If they would have made it where I could pay for them, now they're talking about doing animated GIFs and that kind of stuff. I don't want animated GIFs. I can't put that on the back of my computer. I can't put that on the back of my tablet. It, it just really bums me out that they did this. The, and, and one of the things that I've always kind of complained to, that I, I thought it was the wrong model, is they depended on the user to be really watching the show live. They gave you a window of opportunity, and it was mainly based on East Coast to West Coast time of when the TV show aired. You had that much time to check in, or you couldn't earn the sticker anyway. How many people watch live TV? I don't know. I'm not a huge person that watches live TV. I never understood it, but I'll be honest with you. I made the effort, even if I wasn't watching the show, but it was being DVR'd. I checked in so I could earn my sticker. Um, which just goes to show how many false positives you could get if you're actually using this to gauge. But you know what? Um, I, I don't think interaction. it's a gauge. I think it. I, the, I think the entire point of the app, like just like you can go to like WWE has an app. You go on and you can watch the Twitter stream and other stuff happening live, right? Um, mm -hmm. The Macy's Day Parade. I ha had an app that I brought up. You can watch it live and get all the feedback and all the information, right? Um, I think. I think the whole point is being part of the conversation, even though you checked in and got your sticker, even though you weren't watching, you still, if you had it, Sarah, maybe you turned this off, but ideally, you also got your sticker and tweeted and Facebooked it as well. So you just right. became, you, you watching that show did just become part of the conscious and the conversation on those other networks to your friends. So you, they still got what they wanted out of you, which was more of you being the advertisement for the show, instigated by the idea that you're getting a sticker, uh, then really, you know, a gauge of, I know you watched it. And it was interesting because it's almost like every every show or movie. I mean, I remember way back that they, they actually did books and and audio mm -hmm. and all kinds of different stuff that, that tied in. I mean, you could earn the Taylor Swift CD release sticker or whatever. But it's almost like every media entry had an actual... Um, almost like a Facebook fan page where yeah. then you had like this stream of everyone commenting on the show and posting additional pictures. It was a really good interaction point. And I, I, I just, I feel like when they got rid of the stickers, they turned a, a lot of users off and, and I'm hoping that they're, they're talking about their rebranding that's, that's coming this week or next week. And, um, some of the they're, they're touting that they're going to have new features on the way, but they really don't go in unless I've missed something. They really don't go into what those features are. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems like such a generic name they're changing it to TV tag. Mm -hmm. it, it just it doesn't stick out. I, I don't think you're going to get a lot of new people on this unless you got something really compelling. Because I think the physical stickers was the compelling thing that a mm -hmm. lot of people jumped on the bandwagon for. I mean, they've definitely, uh, they've definitely, uh, 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 you know, inherited a large number of users. But I don't know. I, I, I think this is the, the nail in the coffin for these guys. It's gonna be or, and uh, like I said, maybe they'll bring back the stickers. If if if, if the stickers were a dollar a sheet plus whatever it is now for a stamp, thirty seven cents postage. Mm -hmm. I I definitely pay that. And I'm sure they can get some. They could probably actually make a, a few cents. Is it? Are we getting? Are we getting away from the idea of gamifying things like this now? Because remember, that was that was like the buzzword in social media like a couple years ago. Was uh, Foursquare gamified your check-ins of where you are? Uh, this gamified this. You know, you get your badges. You get your. Are we? Are we kind of numb to that now? That we needed physical stickers in order to do that? Is is that is that the passing of this idea that they're moving on from this? I, I don't think they're going to get rid of that theory because uh, it would almost be like Xbox getting rid of achievements. It's it's bragging rights. True. The problem the problem now is I I can't brag because I don't have a sticker to stick on something. Yeah, it, it, it's nice to have like I, I would always throw them on the old uh, uh, you know 2006 Dell I have laptop and be taking that and that's what I would record audio on. It's like and I got my cool house MD special sticker on there and stuff like that. You know, it, it was really nice for that. And, and, well, hell yeah, I even have a couple podcast stickers on there. I forgot. Yeah, and it was a good. It's a good way to start conversations. If you walk into a room and you really don't know anyone, mm -hmm. 
the sticker sitting on the back of your device. I mean, I, I think they're, and I'm looking at my stickers now. I think they're a good way, like a good conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Oh, you saw such and such. Do you, do oh, you like it? I was thinking about watching that. You're a or... Walking Dead fan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I don't know how many people's MacBooks and laptops I've seen just littered with these things in fun patterns sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm sitting here kind of laughing because I have you guys talking about stickers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, if you break it down, you guys are very excited. Not that there's anything Give wrong with that. Give me a sticker, damn You guys, it. it's, it's, and like I said, I, lo I love the concept and the stickers, but it's just, it's interesting, everybody, because when you, when you think of stickers, you're like, oh, sparkles, and, but no, these are real cool, legit. Mm -hmm. Well, think about, think about PodCamp and how many times people have you done creative things with the stickers from there. I mean, I think at one point in time, I can't remember who it was, but took their jeans and entirely coded them. In pod camp, pod camp stickers. Yes, yes, Beth, Beth's butt. Yes. So, I, I mean, stickers are fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're branded I, I and like you do stickers. interesting things with them. And, and and I think the bigger point is it was a reward, much yeah. like your your badges on Foursquare mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this case, it was like it actually amounted to a physical reward. And just like, you know, oh, I should check in. So, I guess I remember every week it was like, oh, I need to check into Monday Night Raw because there's going to be a different sticker, right? Um, so, I'm letting everybody know that I'm watching Raw. Like, they think I'm going to be watching anything else on a Monday night, seriously. Um, Do you think we're going to get tired of the digital rewards? Do you I, think things are going to swing in this direction where it's going to need a tangible, physical? Reward? I think so. I, I well, I think I think you already get that a little bit. Well, one you get that I think a little bit with something like clout. Mm -hmm. They have physical rewards mm -hmm. they send you, but that, that's a whole other thing where you know they see that you're an influencer and they have the algorithms. The whole debate on whether that's for real or anything <laughs> like that is, is something else. Um, but again, with this was like we get you to talk about you're watching this show again. Like I explained, so we got you integrated in your social feeds. We got the conversation started. You just did your adver our advertising for us. Thanks a lot. Here's a sticker. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I, I think it could be. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical reward, depending on what you define as physical. Mm -hmm. I think Google could really take take a lesson from this and say, you know what based on how many plus ones your Google Plus post gets, I mean, give give an X amount back to that user in the Play oh, Store. Their, their, award, their award is giving you better search rankings for having shares <laughs> and comments in the long run. Let's be honest here. Um, but, the, but no, they don't come out and say that, though. That's a very intangible uh, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like, if you know your social, your, your SEO, I'm sorry, and your social SEO, and... Uh, uh, and, and have a, a conversation with Munns, for instance, uh, you get that, right? Um, but no, I, I think people are probably waning from that. Like, I know I don't check into Foursquare as much as I used to because I'm like, nobody needs to know that I'm going to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes if I'm like, oh, we went to uh, an event, you know, we went to the Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. we went to do this, you know, that's a bigger thing. Um, you know, like we go hang out a slice or something, you know, I mean, that that's an event thing that I'm like, yeah, I want to share them. Don't do Plus, it. it's a local thing. Yeah, yeah. And more to say, hey, check out this local mm -hmm. business, you know, especially for something like Slice mm -hmm. and other restaurants and stuff like that. But um, I, I feel like I, even Foursquare, I was more apt to check in to Foursquare when I was getting something for it. Like, yeah, I knew yeah. I was going to earn the hoverboard badge if I could make it to three Apple stores. Or the mm -hmm. fight or the fight to be mayor. Right. Know? Or the fight to be mayor or... Mm -hmm. I would always check in at Hola Hands because you got free disco. Fries. And that's the other thing. And, there, and there's another reward system that actually turns into a tangible reward. Again, depending on the venue. I remember when we had we were, we were running uh, Foursquare when we had the cafe. I could actually go and say, ten, like, we actually set up a thing for a while where you got ten percent off, you know, if you were the mayor, which was the same person for a lot of the time. But that's fine, you know. She kept coming back. Um, <laughs> hi, Jen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you could go in and, and do that. And I think it's been a really good marketing slash again telling your people and 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 uh, uh, you know invading your your social stream and conversation as far as that goes. Um, I mean all all this and in the long run all this is 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 these venues and and TV trying to get you to do the advertising for them. That's the whole reason social exists is you you just you just um, uh, deputized uh, all these people to talk about your thing 
and advertise it for you with word of mouth, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we now represent a brand. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we all do, you know. I, I'm, I'm doing a podcast talking about, you know, Google Glass. I'm tweeting it, hashtag Google Glass. And now that's, I mean, that's the whole point of the Explorer program is we go out and we do things and we talk about it. And now, now that's affecting the mind share. And that's also fighting off this whole, you know, anti-Google Glass stuff, like with the with the tickets and the, the movie theater debacle and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, and we're uh, advocates for, it, you know, in a lot of times. So paid, we paid to be advocates, mm-hmm. but uh, you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. But, I mean, that's, that's, that's one example of, of many kinds of yeah. things you could do with that. So, uh, but no, I think we're getting fatigued of, Oh, you got a badge. Yay. Yay. I don't get so excited when I get an achievement on Xbox anymore, for instance, Mm -hmm. you know, like that number means nothing to me anymore. What my points are, um, again, the, the, you know, when I randomly check into Foursquare, I get the, well, you got the level five, uh, brewery badge or something. It's like, yay. (laughs) But But I thought on the Xbox side, they were supposed to start doing it where you could potentially trade in you wouldn't lose the achievement points no. but you could kind of use achievement points to purchase extra or, or it would earn you extra a, clothes or the little yeah whatever like you the avatar stuff. with your player care avatar stuff there and, is and I, there we, there's something where everyone's gonna see your avatar mm-hmm. much like they're gonna see your get glue stickers it has to be something and i'm not saying it has to be as tangible as a sticker but I think it has to be something where I can easily display and say, ha ha, I have more of whatever than you do. Something that makes you look like the elite one. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, um, <laughs> like the online equivalent of like, hey, you're the one with the shiny new iPhone. You know, um, I, I can see that. Yeah. I, I, and, and the Xbox one. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not so much you get achievements and it, it translates. It's. Like, I, I think it only works if you buy a lot of new games and check out all the new apps and buy, like, movies and stuff that you actually get the rewards. Like, it's more like a consumer awards thing, you know? It's like going buying stuff at Shop and Save and you get perks kind of idea. Because I always get the email every month, and it's always a balance of zero, you know? Randomly, I got, like, 400 points, and I can't even remember what I did. Uh, to get but I, I think, like they are saying, too, though, a lot of some of those Avatar pieces are going to come based on if you played... Like a prior, like let's just use uh, Call of Duty as an example. Call of Duty Ghosts, if you played prior Call of Duty games, you can actually get certain avatar pieces and and additional achievements that unlock other things. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one of those things where then, okay, so I see Joe User is on on a, a game playing something that I don't have access to. Mm-hmm. It's another one of those things where you can say, I, "I'm the elite one." Yeah, and and yeah. Shachi says that that he's the actual elite one. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It's definitely less of the conversations, the, the the rewards like they used to be, though. But I think we're just kind of used to it. It's not a new thing. I, mm-hmm. And I and I think the tech people are used to it. I, I don't know if the normal the normal run of the mill person is is a hundred percent up to speed with with what was going on with that. I think I think the, the early adopters are the people that picked up on on the, the, the gamification of certain things. I think there's a there's a long road that, that could run and, and and most people aren't aware. Of what's out there, mm-hmm. and I mean, I don't know, Dutters. What do you think about it? I mean, you're in the in the social media and stuff like that. Do you, do you see companies potentially continuing to use it as advertising, or 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 did someone actually figure out that this didn't pay off? I, I find it hard that I can't imagine that these stickers cost more mm-hmm. than fifty cents, including postage, to ship to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I can't imagine that that they didn't make more in advertising, getting advertising dollars, because because you figure everybody had to submit their sticker, which to get their sticker on there I'm sure then they paid something in return, mm-hmm. and it was way more than what it cost them to get this to me. Definitely, mm-hmm. 
Oh, I, th I think, and I think you bring up a good point that you have users at different stages. Uh, let's take Facebook, for example, where it was all, everybody was first the tech group and then the kids got on it. And now you're seeing more of our parents, our grandparents on it, not the, the later adopting technologies. I mean, or technologist people. And, um, I think you may see that more with the apps, like for example, Foursquare, people still fight over mayorships, even though, um, I'm not so much into it anymore because I've been doing it for so long and there's so many of us who've been doing it for so long, but there are still people who have just gotten into this going, hey, this is pretty cool. I can be mayor of the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was mayor of the Fort Pitt Tunnel for years. I mean, it was ridiculous how long and then it was just like, eh, I don't feel like fighting to get it back anymore. And, and I think once that these groups kind of fall off and it, the popularity drops off and they quit finding ways to bring you in like I, like I check into places like uh, pennies or sears or old navy because they have discounts for me you check in here yes oh do i get a discount on something i i should put something in there yes we need a discount <laughs> i here. should claim it and 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 uh put something in there i uh, i think there's going to become a point where we're almost we need something else you can't just say digital good job way yeah, to go yeah. yay but we either going to need some more exclusive something something that well, like we say the elitist but something that makes us feel special and gives us a reason to keep on doing this. Well, and it's also, I mean, this is the same kind of endorphin release of achievement that you get when you achieve something in a farm film. Like that whole mm -hmm. psychological, that mm -hmm. makes you know, all those Facebook games and the freemium games work, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that's, uh, maybe, I, I think maybe that concept maybe moved to that area, you know, and those are taking over. All of our temple well, runs, all of our minion games, you know, all of our Smurf berries. Um, and, and maybe that's, that's it's it just, it, it didn't really go away. It just kind of shifted to something where they can make more money at it, mm -hmm. too. So. Or, or do you think it'll be something where it'll be a little more automatic as you, as you hear companies talking about NFC and iBeacon, where you'll be in a store and they can actually push an advertisement to you with a percentage off based on something you're standing near? Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be based on the fact that you walked up or you're driving through the Fort Pitt Tunnel, or you walk up to Starbucks, it's just going to check you in. I can tell you that uh, if I get near a Sears, I get a notification. Really? Yeah. Wait, wait, from, from like the app? Yeah, they have a Shop Your Way Rewards program. Okay. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll get random. I'm not saying it's great, because there have been times where I've been like, well, I'm not that close to a Sears. Yeah, yeah. But it'll pop up that I'm near a Sears. It's interesting. Oh, I wonder if that's just straight GPS. It's not an iBeacon. Because I mean, I because it's more in store. Specific yeah, this is this is store, but this is it's just saying. So, so you your Sears app is always pinging your GPS. Obviously, basically, yeah. <laughs> so Sears always, always knows, knows where, where you're at. You're at. <laughs> again, you start thinking about that. It's, do I do I want to do that? Do I want to um, do that? But again, yeah. if you're like, yeah, I want to deal with what I'm wearing Sears. I really like shopping there. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. I, I, honestly, I with me personally, and, and me giving up my GPS location to these apps, it. One day it occurred to me that Verizon knows exactly where I'm at at all times, no matter what app I have attached to my phone. And we all know how I love you, Verizon, but we know how I, I have this much trust for what they're doing with my information. I think they're the biggest one that yeah. lets the NSA have stuff. Yeah. That's so, I mean, call. if at least if I put my GPS information out there, I get something for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, a, it's getting shared one way or the other. It's, I mean, I don't know if, what kind of view you would consider that, if that's a little harsh or whatever, but that's that's when I, when I kind of put that together, I was like, eh, you know what? Um, tracking back a little bit, uh, Brother Sorg, Matt, uh, actually uh, says, uh, Xbox uh, does have their rewards program. Last year they added certain levels of gamer store score will give you the rebates on purchases uh it's uh, a vip it looks like here and he actually sent sent the site in the chat room and yeah if you've achieved like if you've achieved over three thousand uh for every ten dollars you spend you get 50 rewards credits uh you know uh at twenty five thousand uh, for every ten dollars you spend, you get two hundred rewards credits. So there is like a tangible thing here, and they ha do have also like some other. Uh, they have like what they're calling a VIP Hall of Fame, uh, getting awesome rewards. Uh, so so yeah, they have something like that. So I think they have a couple of things going on here, and I notice they're mixing it up a good bit. Like they're adding uh, this is kind of another thing, but they're adding like the free games with the subscription that we've been all paying for years for Xbox Live. Uh, but it's kind of nice to kind of get something back for that for what you are spending with that, other than just having access to all the services you know because you still have to have xbox live that to have netflix that you're also paying for so it's kind of uh yeah but you're all used to it by now 
the, the one place I do find it extremely helpful to be checking in on things like Foursquare is when I'm in when I'm in, a, in an area like uh, we were where were we we're, we were a Comic Con the one year in New York and <clears throat> like I check in everywhere I go when I'm away in a location for the mere fact of I'm probably never going to remember the name of place XYZ, mm -hmm. but I will go back, if I ever visit that place again, I will go back in my feed to that point in time and say, oh yeah, that was the name of that bar, or oh yeah, that was the that was where I went for a slice of pizza that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I will draw back on that information, but I will never ever probably remember the name of the place when I was there. I think it's also been nice, um, if you pull up Foursquare, I've noticed a lot recently, I say, oh, hey, are you at so-and-so, you know? Uh, are you, like, mm -hmm. every time I'm at Slice, it's like, oh, you at Slice? Because there's nowhere else, there's nothing mm -hmm. else around up there, yeah. so it's not going to pick that up. Or, or we were actually at Pizza Milano, it says, are you at Constable Arena, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I can see if, like, you're in an area, you just pull up and say, hey, where was that place I was here last time? It's probably the one that's going to pop up for you. So it is kind of smartly... Google Nowing, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I think Google Now is another thing that probably does something like that, too. Mm -hmm. So, well, a great conversation, uh, uh, but we do have to uh, get out of here. Uh, Sheila, what is coming up here on the calendar? I do have a couple things on the calendar. Um, nothing actually has a solidified date yet, but um, one of the big things coming up is a Star Wars game. It's coming up, uh, I think they're saying, in the spring which it isn't too far around the corner, hopefully, because it's goodness. extremely cold outside and it shouldn't be. Um, so Star Wars is coming out with its first game, and actually it's going to launch multi-platform iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and Ooh. RT. Ooh. And this is one of the first... I think what's more important about this than it being multi-platform is the fact that it's, the, I think, the first game since they were Lucasfilm was bought by Disney. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see... If this is the first of many, because this doesn't look like that intensive a game. No, Actually, it looks like a collectible card yeah, game. Yeah, it looks like a collectible card game. That, uh, they, they said The one article I read said it looks like it's based on one that, that didn't catch on very well in some forums that were running. Uh, so, uh, you know, hey, uh, several, as far as like the Windows Phone side, I also saw uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is actually going to be on Windows Phone. Yes. So that's um, and I think they're actually linking. There's some. There was some fine print about that too, where you may be getting achievement points, or there's something that's going to link back to like Xbox or something mm -hmm. that not that everybody else isn't going to get. You know, if they, be if on they a keep pushing that, that if they, it, you know, Microsoft's got the money to throw at something like that, and they probably did this that for Rockstar to get San Andreas on there. Uh, they need mm -hmm. to do the throw money thing to get people, get games on that Windows phone. If they do more tie-ins with Xbox, that becomes your handheld. That becomes your PS Vita or, you know, Nintendo DS, 3DS to your Xbox. You know, and that I think that's that's exactly what they need to do. Get that gamer point. Well, and Kraus does stuff like that, too, because I think he plays, like, some card game that's on live. Mm-hmm. But then it's also on his phone. So he can kind of pick up one place and play and then continue to play in the other. Um, and I know we, we have to kind of wrap. Um, oh, they, upcoming they, is going to be Windows 8.1 Update 1, mm -hmm. which I think is going to be a big big thing for Microsoft. I'm sure we'll hear about more about that in the next month. Tell, tell me, and can, then can, iOS I, can I stop my uh, computer from wanting me to install 8.1? Because I just don't want to update so I don't screw up the whole Wirecast thing. And it, just, it just pops up a giant thing to update and says, remind me later, I, every freaking time I start my computer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it, it's like a, I think they've taken the Apple or Android model on that. Yeah. I think they're going to keep reminding you. Uh, oh, you, you, you might be able to search some online forms to make it think that it's upgraded. Yeah, because I know there, there was a way. I know there was a way that if you were part of the preview, mm -hmm. you could go in and edit a file to make the install think that you weren't on preview and you were on original so you didn't have to reinstall everything. Yeah, I have to do something because I can't, I don't like the idea of these auto updates on a production machine like this. I just can't, I can't come in here one week and it says, oh, we're not going to work because so we haven't installed an update. We just, uh, I, 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 it's my first production machine in the Windows world in, in, in a long time. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting growing pain here as we're already seeing. Um, all right, what else we got? You said iOS. You said my my Springboard Pro is going away. Yes, and I have a feeling that you're gonna see all these things all of a sudden crop up at once. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think it's going to be one of those who can get who can get the the at the top of Google News when when different things occur. You have you have Mobile World Conference coming up in the next week or two, um, and then you're going to have the Microsoft Build Conference, and um, Apple will have their their conference coming up. I think what you're going to see is every time someone has a conference, all the companies are going to release something to try to get to the top of that news feed and, and beat out everyone else's announcement that they planned a conference around and spent millions and millions of dollars around. And someone's going to try to sweep in and say, oh, look, we just released this. And it's going to completely mask what, what others have done. So I think it'll be an interesting late, late winter, early spring for massive amounts of news, which is good for us. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, and uh, anything come up you want to talk about? No, no. You got nothing? I just want to make sure. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Dutters, you're at Dutters on the Twitters. Kate Marie PGH on Instagram. <laughs> what? PGH, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram for oh, Porta Potty right. Pictures. For Porta Potty Pictures, <laughs> that's what you can expect from her. <laughs> Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitters. What are you talking that's about? Up. What are you talking about? Uh, you, now you, I'm you, actually going. I'm going. I'm going through and playing with titles. Playing with titles. The t the title options. It's give me a sticker, tech bras. Uh, <laughs> I think it should be something about putting a sticker on the bra. But I was trying to come up with a pitchy name. Awesome, and of course at, at Sorgatron, Sorgatron.com, MikeSorg.com, and of course check everything at SorgatronMedia.com. We're here every Tuesday, 6:30 p.m. Eastern Time, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, at Awesome Castle on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Google Plus, uh, a lot of great conversations going on. Awesome cast at SorgatronMedia.com, iTunes, Roku, Bloop TV, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher. <sighs> and thank you, of course, to Michael Allen, who's been helping us with the notes and the tweets for weeks, months even. Uh, I want to make sure to give him credit for that, okay, letting people know what's going on on the show while we're on the show and helping us keep that together. Uh, so we can remember what the heck we talked about on the show as well. Uh, so thank you to that. Thank you to our awesome chat room joining us, of course, uh, as well. Thank you, for, you know, Brother Sorg, Riz, Chachi Says, uh, Killer Kraus, uh, Juggalo John, all in there uh, uh, sending over links and telling us when we're wrong about stuff and all kinds of stuff all night long. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.